Ah, Zenoga, the fan favourite, the thunder puppy, zappy lassie, the hound with the ground, whatever you want to call him. The original fanged wyvern breakdanced its way into our hearts when he was first introduced in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, and he's stuck with the series ever since. Now that he's made his appearance in the new world, he's predictably come with a few new tricks and changes, so let's get into those. We'll be covering how best to exploit his openings, various combos, and everything else I've been able to learn in my time getting stomped by this dude. Do bear in mind that I've mostly approached Zenoga seriously with Insect Glaive, Switch Axe, and Charge Blade, so the results may vary with other weapons, but if you're also as serious as taking on this puppy as I am, then strap yourselves in. There's gonna be a lot. First things first, I mean who the hell even is this guy? It's simple, Zenoga is the original fanged wyvern. This trailblazer shares a symbiotic relationship with a special breed of insects known as Folgerbugs. By summoning more of these insects, he charges static electricity, granting thunder element properties. This can then be infused into claw slams, back slams, tail slams, and even to call thunder down from the heavens. The host for this swarm of static bears a slight weakness to ice, breakable claws and horns, and stars as your next foe after defeating the final story quest of Iceborne, so you know that he means business. Now that we've all said hi to Zenoga here, let's go and check out the fight, starting with his charge states. Zenoga has to take a bit of time to charge his batteries, and he can do this either manually or automatically. You really want him to do this manually, as it can give you a large opening to charge your various gauges, tenderize a body part, or flash him out of it to stop the process. The automatic charge, however, involves Zenoga surrounding himself with thunder attacks, making it very difficult to land any sort of damage. He usually does this as part of a combo, but we'll get to that. Once fully charged, his attacks deal more damage, inflict thunder blight, and he speeds up in general. The good news is that you can knock him out of this mode by dealing enough damage, at which point this process will begin again. In order to understand Zenoga's charge mechanics, you have to realise that each type of animation holds its own value. Zenoga begins the hunt by needing a value of 4 to reach his fully charged state, and once this is dispelled, the requirement will lower to a value of 3. A manual charge increases the gauge by 1, and the automatic charge holds a value of 2. Needless to say, you really want the dog to learn how to sit for a second to get the best times out of him. This can also give you a good idea of how Zenoga will move, as he will always jump back once he reaches full charge, and roar to signify the change, so keeping track of these numbers is key to being prepared for the worst. A final thing to note is that Zenoga's charge levels are completely separate to his rage mode, so you best keep your eye on that icon. When both combine, you're in for a brutal onslaught of attacks. That leads us on nicely to said attacks, combos, and how to punish them. We'll start with his uncharged mode, and then cover the dance moves you will face once he gets his engine running. Now, we could cover the basic body tackles and how he moves, however there's really only a few things to watch out for. The main thing that you want to be aware of is the headbutt combos. Zenoga will headbutt forwards a lot, and chain it into a wide variety of attacks. If he jumps backwards after this headbutt, be on your guard as he will jump towards you again and begin his auto-charge attack. The auto-charge can be punished, as it presents enough of a window for even Charge Blade to get a full SAED off. However, Thunder strikes around our target for this animation, preventing you from properly closing the gap. Nevertheless, there is a pattern to this madness. Now the way that I picture this attack is with a clock face, with Zenoga's head at the number 12. The lightning will trigger on every single even number on this clock face, from head to tail, then a burst will surround him. You can position yourself on the odd numbers on this imaginary clock face to sneak an attack in, or ready your clutch claw. Moving on, the 360 degree tail swipe is another such attack that covers a circle around the monster. It's fairly uncomplicated, Zenoga will wind back and then sweep his tail around him in a circle. You want to pay attention to the tail itself, and evade into it to bypass any damage. The last two things to cover are the pin and the manual charge. Zenoga's pin is unique in that it cannot be blocked even with guard up, and the hitbox persists just enough to mean that evading isn't really an option. The only option here is distance, and provided that you're right under his head, when you see the telltale spasm it means that it's just a simple roll away from him. Once the paws hit the ground, you can jump back in and continue your assault. Now to wrap up the uncharged state, we're going to talk about the manual charge. It's not necessarily an attack, but rather an opportunity. Your first focus should be to tenderize Zenoga if you haven't yet, and the other options are just pure damage. Do your best combos, do what you can, just run in there and beat on him. 
do note that after Zenoga does the run attack, he will turn to face you, and around about 70% of the time will begin this charge, so it's a safe gamble to start your attacks before the animation begins. Lastly, a quick note on tenderizing this terrier. The most convenient hit zone to go for are the arms. They're much more easily accessible as you'll be hitting those a lot of the time compared to the head, which moves a frankly antisocial amount, and the hit zones don't particularly differ all that much, so you won't really be screwing yourself out of damage. Okay, Zenoga's gotten charged up now and we're on to the true fight. How does our animated Alsatian change once he gets his pre-workout in? We'll cover these charge attacks now both in and out of rage mode. The main word of the day here is combos. The moves that we covered previously can be chained from and into other attacks, as well as some new offensive options making an appearance. Here's the sense that I've made out of it. We'll go over the auto charge attack mentioned previously, as it begins in much the same way. A headbutt, a jump back and then a leap forward, but with a large paw slam replacing this charge up animation. This large slam can be avoided by evading at a 45 degree angle towards the dog, or just to the left or right. Now watch your back though, as in rage mode, this is then bookended with a huge back slam, where only distance will save you. Once this rush is finished, I find that it's also enough spare time to squeeze in another SAED, so it's not all terrible. Another flip that presents itself is a double attack. Our crackling canine will scrape the ground in front of him, then perform two big flipping slams. You can chain two rolls in order to dodge, either to the side or towards him. Just be sure to begin this when he first takes off. He will then finish this attack by standing still and rolling his head dramatically. Make sure to take advantage of this, as it is a fairly decent opening as well. The poor slams next. Zin chains three when he's powered up, and adds another on the end if he's in rage mode. The first two are light slams, which don't even knock you back if you keep attacking, however the final slams are serious business. You should try your best to guard or distance yourself when you see him winding up. I know that I've been speaking in charge blade mostly here, but if you do pay attention to Zenoga's current level of anger, you can punish the final slam with an AED to the face or to the arms. Alright, we're almost out of the woods here. The final attack that we'll be covering is the orb summon. Zin will do a fancy pirouette and then spawn lightning orbs around him. Very very simple, just get close. They take a short time to manifest, and when they do, they do so at a distance. It's a huge opening, so once you get inside the circle of those orbs, you can unleash hell. It's another SAED tier opening in terms of the time that it gives you. Oh, we're almost done. Finally, once you knock Zenoga out of charge, he will flinch to the side, but don't let up. He will always follow it up with a short roar that has no effect, so keep plugging away. As a final note, the roar when entering rage or full charge has just enough time for again another AED, so make sure to plan your weapons combo accordingly. So there you have it, an attempt to explain one of the most highly anticipated returning monsters this generation. I hope that this, while slightly intensive analysis, can be helpful for predicting the Thunderwolf's next move, and can help you to get the most out of the fight. Please let me know what you think, I may do this again sometime, and if you made it this far, come chat with me on Twitter or Twitch, if you fancy. Alright, be good to each other lads, I'll see you all later.